how to use type to create unusual art history brush sources to create all kinds of different designs. So I've got some type here already created, but I'm just going to go back right to the fresh point. So there's the original document. I just want to flatten that. What I can then do, I can add some type to it. Now I've got that stored. Obviously it's a, a snapshot, which you can always go back to at any time. That's the original design. But to add some type, simply go to the type tool and just add some type. Now you can vary the font, you can vary the size, you can put all those sort of things. Maybe go for, say, 36 point. And then just drag across the document with the type tool and you get this type here, fill it quickly filled. And then just kind of quickly copy and paste that so you can, unfortunately it doesn't fill the entire text. It would be really nice if you, that whole box was filled straight away, but unfortunately it doesn't do that, it just fills a little bit. Press return. And now you can obviously, don't have to keep it like that. You can always rotate it. So you get the type going, and that influences the way the art history brush applies. Anything that's black, and that's the key thing, makes sense it's black, the type is black, and you can then press turn. And of course, what you can also do, you can hold down the alter option key, and you can duplicate that type, so you can just add some more. Now, I know this doesn't means that the image itself doesn't look particularly very much at this point, but you can bring the original image back in again. So layer and flatten image. Now I'm gonna quickly add that as a snapshot. Notice I've already got one already, that was the earlier one. So new snapshot, click OK. That's all stored away, that's the key thing, store that snapshot away, because you're gonna use that as a source for the art history. Now the art history is there, that might be in a completely different location, because you might have customized your Photoshop toolbar. You can edit the toolbar. So you edit it and put the obviously art history where you want it in your tools. I've done quite a few videos about that, about how to customize the toolbar. So just gonna select the art history. Now I'm using, now I'm using, I'm just gonna quickly show you what I'm using, just a star. Now I've created an earlier video where I created the star, this star design. So Please check that out. I will put it in the description so you can find it, but it's just basically a star, which I've defined as a brush. And it seems, this art history seems to work nice with a star. Now other designs I'm certain can be used as well, but that's the one I use. Now I use it obviously about, because it's about, the design itself is 300 by 300. But you can of course reduce the size to say maybe six points, six pixels, and then using normal, Capacity, loose long and area 59 pixels and tolerance zero and angle zero. That might vary depending on the Photoshop you're using. So once you've got that, just go down and then edit and fill. And I'm going to fill it with black. Now, got nothing there, of course. But what you can do, the art history will put something back in again. Now, if I use, obviously, if I just apply it with that, that's just the stand, that's what would happen if you had the, the actual standard image, which just applies that. However, now I've got these other snapshots. I've got the first snapshot. So to get the history state, simply click on this, just this sidebar, just along here on the left. Click on there, and then you can apply it. And now this was one that I created in an earlier tutorial, and it's going that sort of direction. You've got a general that direction. Well, here's the one I just created a few seconds ago, that snapshot. And you can see obviously it's going in a different direction. Now you can change brush settings, but it's influenced the way, the direction, or the way that the art history is applied. And you can see up there, and of course you can always resize, oops, that one. Change the size, maybe 19 pixels. So you can see that. But you can also go to brush settings, and all these of course are in the window, brush settings there and layers, so you can see those. Now you can change the shape dynamics, you can put size jitter in, angle jitter, reduce that down, you can change size jitter, change the spacing, maybe make it very, very close, or maybe make it like dots. I generally I go for the 1%. But you can also set the color dynamics, so instead of having it, the colors that were of the, obviously the document, the image itself, you can set saturation say to the middle, and then apply it, and you can see the colors now come in there. They're randomized. So you do apply per tip, you do that as well. 
to fill the whole design with those colors. And it's all going in that direction. And you can see the ripples that are not from the, the particularly for the image. You can still see the image in there. Probably works best when you don't have any color things. So, so I'm just going to reduce that down. But I wanted to show you, you can change those. And also reduce the size. And of course, what you can also do, you can apply effects. So you can go there, and I'm just going to go Gaussian Blur, like that, and then apply. And you just got obviously that design in the background. You can see again the person there, and you can see the white, the shirt. Now, you don't have to, of course, do the other side here. You can leave that completely untouched, or maybe just do it very loosely. Like that. It's all going in that direction. It's got those like, like ripples from the, the type itself. But also what you can do, you can go over here to, and I'm just going to move that out of the way, go to layers, and you can create a new layer. So layer and new layer. Maybe add some more. And once you've done that, you can then go to so layer and layer style. Maybe Pebble and Boss. And you can see you can give some like three dimensional to that brush, those brush strokes. Click OK. Now, what you can then do, of course, you can go to Layer Menu and Flatten Image, and then you bring the original image back. But to do that, you need to go to History. So the History panel, just there. In the History panel, just go up to the top, and there's the original. Now, the History State I'm going to be using is that one. So just click there. Then go to Edit and Fill, and then go to, not black, but go to History. Now I'm using blending mode normal, because I can change it later, so I'm just going to click OK. So I bring back the image. Now, of course, that's lost all of that original design. What you can do, you can always go to Edit and Fade Fill. And then you can run through very easily all of the different, now some work better than others. Color burn, linear burn, color dodge, and overlay, and click OK. And see, you can create all kinds of very unusual designs using type. You could just apply there. And of course, you can still continue to add type to this and then go through the same approach to add more and more layers of design to this. And you've still got the original image just via this history up here. So you can always go back at any point. Now, of course, what you can also do, you can save this. So I'm just going to save this bit now. So by going to right side and new snapshot. So click OK. And you've got that added as a snapshot. It's just down there. Now, I can always, you can always rename them as well. Makes it easier. But you can also now go back to, say, one of these tight ones. There's the there, just actually selecting the snapshot. So you've got the, that design now. What I can do, I can apply effects to that. So I maybe you go for blur, Gaussian blur. If you don't want that much, you don't want blur too much so you can't see the type. So there's the type there. And also what you can do, you can always go for exposure. So you can change that, adjustments. So you can really sort of emphasize the black there of the type. Click OK. So you've got that design there. But then, of course, what you can do, you can use that as a source for your art history. Again, go to Snapshots, New Snapshot, click OK. And then you can go back and go, let's go to the art history over here. Make certain you set the source to that one. Set there. And now edit and fill. And you don't have to use black. You can use any color, you could use a pattern even, but I'm gonna go with white. So this time I'll use white, and now, and that's using the blurred design with the, the color dodge as well. So a whole variety of different designs can be, and of course you can always at any point decide, you know, I'm gonna use that one. So use a different, click there, click that one. And that's going different out. So you get, end up getting one and that way, both ways. And again, you always go back to the other one. Or maybe that one. 
So once you've done that, you can still see, obviously you've got the, uh, I'm just gonna go down there with the, obviously the shirt there. Now you don't have to do all the image, so you could leave some of it completely uh, blank. And then of course, go back again, make certain you've got the right one. Click up there to make that the source, that's the original design. And again, go to edit and fill and history. Click OK and edit and fade fill. Darken, lighten, overlay, and so on and so on. So you can see you can, or difference. You can create all kinds of very unusual, or maybe I'm just going to go with difference. It's pretty good. Or linear light. It's really nice to explore all these uh, blending modes, but you can spend hours doing that. Once you've done that, of course, you can always go to image and menu and adjustments and then maybe use Vibrance. So you can really, that. and you can do it a couple of times. I always love to do adjustments, just really make it a garish color scheme, or something like that. There's a whole heap of things you can do to create some very weird designs using type with your art history brush in Photoshop 221, 220, 219, etc. Well, hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to Graphic Extra channel. Always a new tutorial about Photoshop, Illustrator, Finity Photo, Finity Designer, Finity Publisher, and Critter, Rebel, and many, many others. Also, if you've got any questions, any things that I did too quickly, didn't, didn't explain well enough, please let me know in the comments. I'll go over them again, do it. You know, I'm quite happy to maybe do a certain part of the document image. Just run through it, let me know. Also, a dislike or like. Thank you much.